Paula Sadusky and her boyfriend, Kevin Klim, had planned to fly into Las Vegas from their home in Southern California for New Year's Eve. If she would have went to Vegas, she'd be alive. But Paula and Kevin changed their minds when they found a good deal on tickets to a Lady Gaga concert in Miami. Checking into a hotel in trendy South Beach for a long weekend of partying at its many nightclubs, as well as Club Space, a popular after hours spot in an industrial area of North Miami. The clubs open all night long and into the next day. All night long? Yeah. I mean, this is an, literally an all night party affair. If I had a daughter, she wouldn't be going to Club Space. You see people come out of there, uh, sometimes very trashed. And Paula and Kevin are said by police to be already very trashed when they arrive there around 5 to 5.30 Sunday morning after partying in South Beach for two days. They had both been drinking a lot prior to getting to club space. After drinking for another couple of hours at the club, there's suddenly a problem. Things started happening inside the club. Paula is a girl gone wild. She was wearing a dress that was cut very low, showed off all her legs and her body. She started lifting up her dress. She wasn't wearing any underwear and was creating quite a scene. People were all over her. She was dancing with them. The guys were up at the bar, getting very close to her. Kevin didn't like what he saw. He wanted to get her out of there because it was time to go. And he grabbed her by the arm and said, let's go, babe, time to go. Paula resisted. She was having a time of her life. It looked as if they were fighting. I don't think they got into any blows or anything like that. He was just grabbing her. Come on, we got to go. And P.I. Wasser says Kevin is kicked out of the club for causing a disturbance. On that cold Miami morning, Kevin was escorted from this door. And what he tells investigators is that he jumped into a cab, headed back to his hotel, and went to sleep. That leaves Paula in this club by herself. Yes. But less than a half hour later, Paula is escorted out of the club too. And what she does then remains a mystery. We don't know if she got into a car, if she was walking there's, with There's someone. different stories, but it depends on what witness that you believe. It isn't until Paula's boyfriend, Kevin, wakes up alone in their hotel room around 11.30 a.m. that anyone even has an inkling that something may have happened to her. He realized that she wasn't there and something was wrong. She would have been back. He becomes concerned. He checks in with the hotel staff, and she has not returned yet. They haven't seen her. Uh, he starts to call around to hospitals. And Kevin goes out to search for her. Walking around the South Beach area, he didn't have a car with her picture on a cell phone. Have you seen her walking around? Maybe she was lost. She didn't know where she was. But when he comes up empty, Kevin reports her missing to the police and hires P.I. David Wasser to help find her. He sounded like he was desperate. He was almost crying on the phone that he had lost his girlfriend. Wasser scours Miami for clues, including the area where Paula disappeared. I spoke to cab drivers on Miami Beach. I spoke to a street artist and street people that were down at club space. And still, no sign of Paula until Kevin calls the medical examiner's office. To see if uh, possibly she's there. A Jane Doe had been found burned beyond recognition in a blazing dumpster about 12 miles from club space, about 13 hours after Paula had disappeared. It was this man, Christopher Michael, who called the fire department when he saw the flames leaping high into the air. The flames were at least to the light right there. When the fire department extinguished the blaze and saw what was inside, they notified police. When I got there, I saw the remains inside the dumpster. And even a hardened veteran detective like Michael Gaudio was horrified. I couldn't tell you the mindset of the person who would set another human being on fire. It was a brutal crime. And the only thing left of her remains were some body piercing and some earrings. Things happen, crimes of passion, but you don't go out to destroy them or their memory that perfectly. The medical examiner gets Paula's dental records from her family. And then they called me back and they said, are you sitting down? And they identified that it was my sister. 
Kelly and mom Patsy are heartbroken. If I could have traded places with her, I would have in a minute. You know, she was young, never got to experience getting married, having a baby. I was talking suicide and I just didn't want to live without her. And I still struggle today even after I wear her ashes everywhere I go. Her ashes are around your neck? Every day. Her ashes are around my neck. And I had them put in a heart so I could wear her. Police can't even tell Paula's family how she died, except that... Paula was already deceased uh, prior to being set on fire. The medical examiner here um, after the autopsy was able to determine that. They said it possibly strangulation because there was no knife marks, um, no gunshot wounds, um, but she was burned so bad that it, it was hard to tell. Then Detective Gaudio discovers Paula's boyfriend, Kevin, was once arrested on domestic violence charges. He broke her nose. She fought, he was in jail. He, she filed charges against him. Next, Kevin finds himself in the hot seat. That's something any investigator is going to look at twice, especially in, in the situation that we're in now. 